Hey everybody, welcome back to another daily recap with your girl Alicia. And now let's just jump straight into the charts. So today I did take a trade, but I will talk about a little bit on why I took it and why I maybe shouldn't have taken it. And essentially, yeah, we'll just get into that. And yeah, kind of go over what I see in the markets do and what my analysis was this morning and you know, the drill. So let's just jump down right into the charts. We're gonna start on the daily. All right, so as you know, I wanted to see this daily volume imbalance traded into and the new day opening gap. We did in fact trade into that yesterday afternoon and the fact that we traded into it and then this morning we kind of traded back down into it. I was expecting it to act as an inversion volume imbalance potentially. So we changed that to an inversion volume imbalance. I wanted to see the markets trade into this new week opening gap low, the consequent encroachment of this wick right here, potentially into this order block right here, and then we had some sell side or buy side liquidity on the lower time frame. So that's kind of what I saw on the daily. I was like, hey, since we didn't uh, go lower after we hit that volume imbalance, let's use it as an inversion volume imbalance. So let's go down to the one hour. All right. So on the one hour chart here, we can see the volume daily inversion volume imbalance plus the new day opening gap. It's about the same level. It is the same level. <laughs> And of course we traded into that last night, coming into it at one, or in the afternoon yesterday at one, and of course closing it in, trading lower, trading off the consequent encroachment, <coughs> off the consequent encroachment, back down, higher into the high of the new day opening gap, and then lower. Now this happened at 2 a.m., so these would have been our London session highs. And then we came back down into this 15 minute fair value gap, which we'll talk about in a minute. I just kind of wanted to go over what I saw in the markets right here and why we expected higher pricing. Okay, so we're on the one hour charts. I kind of, before I start marking anything out or making an analysis, I'm like, okay, hey, what is the market been doing? What are we looking at? So if we're looking at these charts right now, like what are some key levels you see? Well, of course, we had the new week opening gap. We have previous new day opening gaps, and then we have the old new week opening gap as well. We have some highs resting above here and here. We have this one hour fair value gap. Again, we have this gap right here, new day opening gap, new week opening gap. So these are some key levels. However, this week we had this one hour fair value gap, traded down into it, moved higher, breaking market structure here, making a new high on Monday. Come back down, filled this in, down into this order block right here. Then we moved higher, breaking this high right here, coming down into this one hour fair value gap and then trading higher. This was yesterday. And then of course the highs yes are, yeah, yesterday at 3 p.m. here, breaking through this daily uh, volume imbalance, and then of course trading around it before coming down into this fair value gap right here, this order block right here. You see that we can see that we came to this high before trading higher, breaking through this volume imbalance and this high that we created yesterday. So right away, I'm like, okay, we can see that the market wants to move higher and it has been moving higher all week. Yes, I wanted to see the high made on Tuesday and then trade lower into that weekly uh, vo uh, weekly volume imbalance, which I showed you guys, or even trading down into this new week opening gap because we have a gap here, right? So we wanna see those lower prices taken as well, but considering we are continuing to break market structure highs, highs, not coming down and breaking out these lows right here. And that to me essentially looks like we are just wanting to go higher. So we're gonna be aiming for higher pricing, higher 
draws on liquidity, higher inefficiencies, so on and so forth. So what are some higher pricings that we could go? We could get this uh, this relative or these highs, this one hour fair value gap, this high, this one hour fair value gap, and then of course this high up here, and then relative equal highs here, if we can trade into these highs as well. But so just kind of looking at that, I was like, all right, like we're probably going to want to continue to move higher. The fact that we couldn't break this low down here, traded higher through this. We had some respect of this in uh, daily volume imbalance, moved lower, and then of course we broke it, breaking these highs again. I was like, okay, we probably want to see higher pricing. Let's use this daily volume imbalance as an inversion volume imbalance. All right, so let's go down to the 15 minute time frame. All right, so again, I see these highs taking place, the break of market structures taking place, have some of this consolidation in this volume imbalance here, breaks down, trades into this 15 minute fair value gap. We only get to the consequent encroachment of that fair value gap, so that's something that we can pay attention to as well, because if it's failing to even fully close it in, I mean, that's just a sign that we are potentially wanting to move higher comes down, takes out this low right here, takes out south side liquidity, breaks down. This happened at 7.45. We had news this morning at 8.15. And then of course we can see this displacement run taking place, taking up the high of Tuesday and this high right here, these relative equal highs. Plus, we also traded higher through the volume imbalance, through the new day opening gap, and takes out high, so break a market structure potentially. We can see here too at 9 a.m. we came back down, traded again to about the consequent encroachment of this 15 minute fair value gap, but we also traded down into about the consequent encroachment of the inversion volume imbalance and the new date opening gap. So seeing that, I was like, okay, well, like we're probably gonna wanna move higher. The fact that we can't even get fill in this fair value gap right here, and we only made it to the consequent encroachment of this new day opening gap in virgin volume imbalance. Kind of shows me signs to want to move higher. So let's just drop, to, drop down to the five minute chart real quick and go over that. Again, have this short term uh, sell side liquidity taken, boom, traded into this fair value gap, into the daily inversion volume imbalance. And we kind of, we had a little bit, we had a bit of a closure, but the fact that they were respecting this level, and then again, higher, making that displacement run, break in market structure, displacement run, came back down. Again, on the 15 minute time frame, this would have been a full uh, fair value gap. We came back down to the in, uh, consequent encroachment of that. And we only made it to about 25% of the opening range gap. And the fact that we could only come down to 25% of the opening range gap kind of gave me some indication that we're going to want to move higher. Yes, we did have news at 10 a.m. this morning, so I wanted to see how that would play out. But I was like, okay, we're not going lower. So I'm not going to go in with the mindset that we've hit a high or we're turning around now. Like, no, we're going to just go for higher pricings. So of course, break market structure again we have this five minute fair value gap here at 9 45 extended we respect it the bodies respect it we have a little bit of a wick trading outside and then one more time we trade back down into there before taking off now this we're trading inside a one hour fair value gap so the fact that we're trading inside this one hour fair value gap and giving a bit of consolidation. I mean, to me, that was like, okay, we'll see what happens. But then we closed outside on the high of that fair value gap, all right? So now we're closed outside of the high on that fair value gap. We have this respect of the five minute fair value gap. And of course we have the higher time frame analysis to back this up. We go down to the one minute chart. So this is the five minute fair value gap. Again, you can see we took up this short term swing low, sell side liquidity, traded below it, take out that liquidity, traded into this order block right here, maneuvered around, displacement right here, 
is prime trade because we came back down into this one minute fair value gap but if you look closely we also came back down into the one minute or the one hour fair value gap high can you guys see that the fact that we traded down to perfectly to that one hour fair value gap high I was like, we're going to use that fair value gap as an inversion fair value gap now. And in confluence with the one minute and the displacement run, plus the break of market structure, plus we took up the sell side liquidity here, this optimal trade setup. Now, so funny because like I was going to take this trade and then in my mind, I was like, oh my God, but if I take a loss, like I'll have to document it on YouTube. And I want to document my losses and stuff, but I don't know why that thought popped into my head. It was like, I think it was like a blockage of me not getting into my trade, finding a reason to not get into the trade. Whereas you can see we had the optimal trade set up here. The fact that this formed at 1013, we traded down to it at 1016. I mean, it's in our time frame. We have our high time frame analysis, displacement, break of market structures. We had sell side liquidity taken. This was the optimal trade. Plus, we wanted to see it trade into the new new week opening gap high, and it did perfectly. That is a nice one to three risk to reward right there. And I just couldn't get in. I just could not get in. I don't know if I was just, again, thinking of excuses to not enter into my trade, just, you know, simply just not getting in. So of course I'm working on that. Now I seen this happen and I was like, oh my gosh, like we had this nice, beautiful run. We traded into this new week opening gap high. And then I was like, you know what? I should have got in. So then I decided to get in the trade. So we had a pullback into this, even though we already reached a level that we were expecting it to hit, we traded back into this one minute fair value gap and I wanted to see it move higher. Since we've already been moving higher, like why not just catch that last bit of run higher? Even though we had already reached our objective right here, I was like, why not? Like let's go reach for this buy side liquidity here and the consequent encroachment of the new coping gap. So we got in. We were in this trade, maneuvering around, maneuvering, and then finally we hit our five points, take profit, not quite reaching into this buy side liquidity, and then we hit, maneuvered around a bit more, went back up, and then we dropped lower, breaking that one minute fair value gap, and of course now we are trading lower. So yes, I may have gotten into a trade. Yes, I may have hit my take profit. Yes, it was a winning trade. But the fact that we waited and waited to get into this trade and then just catching that last run, I mean, to me, it's more of a FOMO trade. I feel like I FOMO'd this entry. I was like, I can't believe I didn't get in the trade. Look at that beautiful run, yada yada. So for me, like this was just more of like a FOMO, like let's just get in just to get in trade. Yes, again, it played in our favor, but was it really a good trade to take? Probably not, probably not. So even though we did have a win today, I would say that was like a C trade, you know. <laughs> like yes, we did see it. Yes, we wanted these objectives to be reached, yes, we had a higher time frame analysis, but again, like this just felt more of like a FOMO trade to me. And I mean, the fact that we are even trading lower now just kind of proves to me that, yeah, I did see this run here, but the fact is I couldn't get in. So then I tried to get in at the last minute. Yes, it hit our take profit, but again, it was just not the most ideal trade. So I'm still learning to take trades. I'm still learning, uh, you know, I'm still trying to get in the market the best I can, but yeah, the fact that we did trade into the new week opening gap and now we are trading lower off of the new week opening gap, who knows, maybe we made the high of the week. We do have news today at 2 p.m., so it could be 2 and 2.30, we have an FOMC meeting, so you know how those go. And then of course, Friday is NFP, so 
The rest of the week is going to be a little bit crazy. I know I'll be on the charts. I'll be watching. I don't know if I'll be entering into any trades now. But we are definitely going to be watching and seeing and charting. At least tape reading. So, yeah, that is it for me. I hope you guys found something useful out of this. I hope you learned something, maybe about some key levels or just what my mind thinks when we reach a certain PD array and then when it fails, we use it as an inversion PD array and essentially why I believe the market was gonna go higher this morning. Now, tomorrow might be a little bit different. Maybe we've made the high of the week and now we're moving lower, but I guess that's a, we'll see you tomorrow, but yes. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Bye for now.